All right. So I think we're live now. All right. So here's the thing with the tier list. And I don't know if there's a way to add my own. Um, I'm using one that somebody else already made. So I didn't get to pick which movies were included in this particular tier list. So we can have a conversation about other movies we think should be in the list. Um, but I'm just going to go off of what's on this particular list and rank the ones that they have here. And we can talk about at the end, we can talk about other ones that we think should be there uh, on top of that. So um, we're going to, I'm also going to, this isn't just going to be the tier list. We're going to do some other stuff in the stream as well. So, um, and, and I'll kind of fill you in on some of that stuff. I'm going to be trying to record a bunch of content, a bunch of reaction videos and stuff for the channel. Uh, today and tomorrow, I'm going to be kind of pre-recording stuff for the rest of the week because uh, Thursday morning, I fly to Georgia and I will be in Georgia Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I'll be there for five days. Um, Josh, so yeah. Um, I want to tell you guys about that real quick because I would love for as many of you as are able to, and we've already got a bunch of people that are planning to meet up uh, for my trip to Georgia at the different times. So let me just run down real quick for you before we get into this tier list, uh, what my schedule looks like in Georgia, uh, and then you can connect with me further if you want specifics. Thursday, uh, I will be landing in Atlanta around 7.30 in the morning. On Thursday morning, I'm going to pick up my rental car and I'm going to drive straight to the uh, Chickamauga Visitor Center. Uh, so the expectation is, uh, with a two-hour drive, uh, the expectation is that I'm planning to be at the Chickamauga Visitor Center 1045-ish, uh, I'm guessing, by the time I get my rental car, get out of the airport and everything. So about 1045, Chickamauga Visitor Center. So if you're in that area and you want to tour the Chickamauga Battlefield with me, Plan on being there maybe around 10.30, 10.45 on Thursday morning. Uh, I'm trying to squeeze in a ton of stuff, so I'm not going to get to do any of them justice. I'm not going to spend all day at Chickamauga because uh, by about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I want to get up into Chattanooga, which is only a few miles away. 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm planning to visit the National Medal of Honor Heritage Museum. Among other things, they have Desmond Doss's Medal of Honor there. Uh, so it's a great museum. I, I've seen videos of it. So I'm going to be touring that for about an hour and a half or so. Going to go from there to the Chattanooga National Cemetery where Desmond Doss is buried, where about 100 German POWs are buried, uh, and also the Andrews Raiders, who were the first to receive the Medal of Honor. Uh, and then if there's, with it, whatever daylight I have left, I'm going to try to see as much of Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge as I can squeeze in before daylight hits and closes down the parks because they close at dusk so uh daylight sh uh, should go till about 8 39 o'clock so i should have a pretty full day uh because i'll be leaving my house at 3 a.m and it'll be about 9 p.m by the time i hit the airport so that's the plan um at pulling out of the airport driveway into bentley i wish i'm actually using uh i have from all my rachel's challenge travels i have enough free points uh with national rent a car that my rental car is actually free uh, so I'm excited about that. And I only have to pay for one night of a hotel during this trip. So I'm excited about that too. A, a, a Waffle House review. Um, uh, you guys can, you can see, uh, it's hard to see probably because it's very small for you guys. But I didn't choose the, the movies that are going to be on this tier list. I'm only going with what is provided on this particular list on Tier Maker. Um, so yeah, so that's Thursday. Friday. I won't really be able to connect with anybody Friday because Friday um, I have to drive straight to Tacoa. I have to meet at noon uh, in Tacoa. We are going to tour the Tacoa uh, military base there. Chappie, thank you. Good evening to you as well, sir. Um, going to tour the base. We're going to tour. There's a museum in town that we're going to tour. Uh, Saturday all day we'll be up on Curahi uh, doing the cleanup of the graffiti. I am plan planning in the 90-degree heat. Uh, to do the three miles up, three miles down at Curahy, either Friday or Saturday. Sunday, I will be driving to Andersonville. It's about a four-hour drive. Uh, I'm going to stop at uh, General Longstreet's grave on the way. Might stop a, few, stop a few other places. And then Andersonville prison site on Monday, which is Memorial Day here in the United States. Uh, and I've already got, I know, a couple folks that are planning on meeting up with me at Andersonville as well. So that's the plan. 
Uh, Free State of Jones is fantastic, I agree. So there's going to be a lot of... Obviously, you can see there's not that many movies on this particular tier list. So, um, yeah, everybody's going to have one that you think should be here. I I don't control what's on the tier list. I'm just going with what they have, and I'm going to rank these ones. So, uh, and a few of these I haven't seen, so I'll rely on you guys to help me rank these as well. So I'm going to start with a few of my favorites, and since I'm visiting Desmond Doss's grave this week... Uh, as well as seeing his Medal of Honor face-to-face. We're going to start with Hacksaw Ridge, and to me, Hacksaw Ridge uh, is an A. It's not a perfect movie. It's I give it an S. And let me tell you my criteria. I'm not ranking these on historical accuracy, okay? If I did, obviously Braveheart would be in the toilet. It would be an F. I'm ranking these on... Uh, how much did I like the movie? How much did I enjoy it? How much would I want to watch it again? Uh, Hacksaw Ridge is one of those ones for me I will watch every time it's on TV. Uh, so for me, it gets an A. Uh, I could I could be okay with people who wanted to do an S on that one. Yeah, Mel Gibson directed Hacksaw Ridge. Thank you, Dexter. Appreciate that. What's going on, Mr. Marius? Um, so Hacksaw Ridge, I don't know how many of you guys have seen it. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. Great battle scenes. Obviously a great story. Uh, and I've talked about Desmond Doss before. Uh, he was a conscientious objector. I did a video on Desmond Doss. You guys can check out. Um, and I'll talk about him more. Uh, let me tell you too, and I'm get, I get off topic. This is what I do. I have ADD. Um, I'm actually planning to do this trip a little differently than I've done some of my other historic site videos. Uh, not real different, um, but I'm really going to tell it more as one long story with multiple episodes, kind of like what I did with Fredericksburg, where it was like a six-part series all on the same topic, only this is going to be different topics, but it's going to be told as multiple episodes of the same story. And I'll show you a little bit of the non-historic stuff too, like me getting up at three in the morning, um, getting on the plane, landing in Atlanta, meeting up with some of the folks in Chickamauga. Um, so I'll be doing it that way, but I'll still have, you know, an episode showing you the Chickamauga battlefield, an episode, uh, visiting the Chattanooga National Cemetery, stuff like that. But it'll be more of a story rather than completely separate things that I'm doing. So that's kind of the plan, the plan. Um, but yeah, I loved Hacksaw Ridge. I thought it was a great movie. Andrew Garfield, you know, for a British dude played a great Tennessean, I thought. Um, all right, let's go to another one here. I'm just kind of picking these out in random order. Um, have I done visits to Gettysburg? Yes, I have uh, only one video. I've been to Gettysburg like 15 times, but uh, I have about a 45-minute video retracing Longstreet's attack on July 2nd and kind of walking through all the parts of that. I was there last year. It was actually in January of 2020 when I was there. So there was like nobody on the battlefield. I was I was like the only person there. Um, I have played Red Dead Redem- Redemption. Um, okay. So, be, behind enemy lines. Okay. So, I thought the movie itself, the story was pretty good. I was not a huge fan of Owen Wilson uh, as an actor in that movie. Uh, so, for Gene Hackman's phenomenal. I love Gene. Gene Hackman's one of those guys I will watch in absolutely anything that he is in. He just steals the scene every time he's in a movie for me. I, I just love him. Uh, so... Owen Wilson drags it down for me. Gene Hackman takes it back up. I'm going to give it a C, uh, only because I just was really turned off by Owen Wilson as an actor in that role. I thought there were so many people who could have done better in that one. I could lean B, maybe B minus C plus for that one. Um, The story itself is great, and I thought it was well done. And there aren't many movies made about that particular part of history, so... So some of you guys are saying B for that one. Uh, yes, I believe 12 Years a Slave is historical. I think the guy who wrote that, um, was, I think it was based on a real real person. Do I play Roblox? Not really. Um, my daughter is a Royal High YouTuber that's got over 170,000 subscribers. So that's why you see that up there. Um, okay. Let's talk about another one here. Um Come and see. S. I think that's come and see. Is that come and see? I'm pretty sure that's what that is. 
If you haven't seen Come and See, one of the best World War II movies ever made. Highly recommend. Um, so uh, I would be curious to hear some of, your, some of you who have seen the movie to let me know your thoughts. But to me, phenomenal World War II movie. Uh, takes place on the Eastern Front. Uh, not a lot of people know about it because it's not an English language movie. And so a lot of Americans haven't seen it. But Come and See, excellent. Definitely S tier for me. Sebastian, how's it going in New York? Okay, yeah, Powdered Toast Man, thank you for that. I thought that it was. Michael Myers, I have a video on the channel from the Alamo. It's one of the earliest videos I did, uh, historic site videos I did on the channel. Favorite movie that is not historical? Hmm, that's a good question. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, uh, Come and See is not an easy watch. It's a tough... You know, there are some movies that you watch um, and, and you're not sure you'd want to watch it again, but you really are glad that you did watch it. Uh, that's one of those movies. It, it's kind. I guess I could compare it to... Some people say that visiting Auschwitz is like that. It's like it's something you need to do, but then once you've done it, you never want to do it again. Um, that's how come and see is, I think. I will visit Indiana sometime. I lived in Indiana for a year. Uh, Enemy at the Gates is on here. So um, I didn't shave for church today, heresy. Yeah, and I preached too. Hey, next Sunday is my first Sunday off in like a year and a half, so I'm super excited. Uh, Star Wars is good. Uh, no, these are not just World War II. It's just that, um, yeah, in fact, the, Behind Enemy Lines isn't World War II. Uh, Return of the King's fantastic. I'll give you that. Um, okay. Let's pick another one here. I'm trying to kind of spread these out. All right, Braveheart. All right, let's do Braveheart. Now, remember, my criteria is not, is this a historically accurate movie? Because Behind Enemy Lines, you know, is, is a fictional story. So that doesn't even really, you know, same thing with um, Saving Private Ryan. It's a, it's a fictional story that's loosely based on something that kind of happened. Um, but purely based on a movie that's set during a historical time period that is a, about historical people that maybe isn't, historically accurate uh, only because it's so inaccurate historically I will give it A and not S um, but then again I, I mean I guess I gave come and see an S but I, I, I'm gonna go A the, the, the kilts for example that really kills it for me the fact that they, they have kilts on and that wasn't th a thing that they did um, I, I'll give it an A 1917 I don't think is on here I wish it was um, I'm just going with the list that they have given me on this. So uh, I have seen Generation War, and it's fantastic. Um, people who have described it as the German Band of Brothers, I think that's an accurate description. Um, S and F at the same time, Chappie. I agree. I, I completely understand where you're coming from with that. Um, okay. Glory is an S for me. Glory is... For me, the best Civil War movie ever made. Uh, Gettysburg's great, but I have a few things with Gettysburg that would hold me back from ranking it as high as Glory. I think the casting in Glory is much, much better than the casting in Gettysburg. Um, yeah, I liked 1917. I wish Master and Commander were on here because Master and Commander would be another S for me. But I don't see it on this list anywhere, so... The kilts were just so we could show Mel Gibson's butt and get the ladies on board. <laughs> they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. I can't do an accent at all. Um, Tora, Tora, Tora is on here. It's right here. It's the third one. I'm going to get to that one. So, yeah, that and Pearl Harbor are both on here. Glory, if you haven't seen it, 1989, so good. Denzel Washington got an Oscar for his role in that. Um, Morgan Freeman's in it. Carrie Elways is in it. Uh, the guy from Stranger Things that plays the cop, he plays General Strong in that movie. Uh, all right, let's see what else is on this list. Uh, let's rank a bad one somewhere. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give Pearl Harbor a D. There are some things I like about Pearl Harbor. I actually liked the, um, the scene, the attack scene. Uh, I liked a little bit of some of the other stuff. The, the Battle of Britain scene was decent. Uh, but oh, 
by and large, when you try to make a historical movie and you wrap it up in a love story and make that the center focus, I just kind of, I get why they do that, but uh, I, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't, couldn't find my way to loving that movie. Yes, Master and Commander is fantastic, even though it's a fictional story. Lincoln and Free State of Jones, um, I didn't choose the list, guys. I'm just going on what they put on this list on Tier Maker. There's a lot of movies I would include that aren't on here. Uh, I, I have to believe Saving Private Ryan's got to be on here. I just I haven't looked it over to find it yet. I don't actually see it. I can't even tell what some of these are, actually. Um... Midway's not on here either. In fact, neither Midway that I can see. And we'll talk about some of the other ones we feel should be on there. Um, all right, let's talk about... Let's let's find another one that should be kind of somewhere in the middle here. Uh, the Dirty Dozen, I like a lot. I'm going to give it a B. Uh, again, not really necessarily a historic movie. Uh, it is set during World War II, but it, it's a fun movie. And it's one of those ones I will watch every time it's on. I don't think I could rank it higher than B, though. But it's so good. It's got you know Lee Marvin's in it, Telly Savalas, Charles Bronson. Um, I'm trying to remember who else is in it. Oh, um, Jim Brown, who played for the Browns, one of the greatest football players of all time. Zach, thank you, sir. Throw the Hurt Locker trash in F, he says. The hey, Enemy at the Gates is on this list. I have seen Inglorious Bastard, Bastard, Bastards. Uh, Atron is based on the USS Constitution, yeah. Alamo, uh, the, if you're talking about the new Alamo movie, it is pretty accurate. Yeah, it's one of the better ones. The The new Midway movie is very accurate as well, historically. Um, Hacksaw Ridge, they actually toned down for the sake of the movie. Uh, what he actually did was actually more incredible even than what they show in the movie. Um, well, I do the president steer again since Biden's elected. No, because I wouldn't do Biden anyway. Uh, in fact, I did the president steer after Biden got elected, so that wouldn't really have an impact. I didn't rank the, the most recent presidents. Um, okay. Apocalypse Now is in here. It's, uh, gambling. Thank you. I thought I saw Apocalypse Now in here. Pretty sure it is. But thank you, Gambling. Could I react to the British Crusade against slavery? Yeah, that's something I would love to get into because I love the story of, of William Wilberforce, which I'm assuming is included in that. Um, all right, here's Black Hawk Down right here. Yeah, so... All right, Black Hawk Down. I'm going to give an A. I thought that was really well done. A, a ton of you know big-name future, big-name actors are in that. Uh, including one of the Medal of Honor winners from Black Hawk Down, was played by none other than uh, Nikolai Coster Waldo, who would play Jamie Lannister in Game of Thrones one day. Um, but man, a bunch of actors, uh, great actors in that. Uh, again, a, a story about a, uh, a wartime uh, film about a, a story that doesn't get told very often, uh, the uh, fight in Mogadishu. And, you know, there's not a lot of movies about that time period. So, yeah, Black Hawk Down's a solid A for me. The Indianapolis, is that the one with uh, Nicolas Cage? I haven't seen it yet. Are there any ahistorical versions I prefer over the more accurate version? Uh, yeah, for example, the old Midway movie, which is not as historically accurate as the new one. Uh, there's some things about that I like better. I, ha I have seen 1917. I thought it was fantastic. Outlaw King is great, and I actually think that's in here. Let me look. I thought I saw Outlaw King on this list. I'm trying to look and see. Maybe it's not on this one. There's Apocalypse Now right there, by the way. Why was I thinking I saw Outlaw King? Maybe it was a different list, because I was looking over different ones trying to find a list to do, and this one had the most in it. There's, is that Inglorious Bastards right there? Um, okay. Three Kings, I was not a fan of. I won't make it an F, but I wasn't a fan of that movie. Gulf War, First Gulf War, uh, George Clooney, I think Matt Damon. I forget who else is in it. And, um, I don't know. I just wasn't a big, big fan of that one. I have seen Generation War. It's very good. 
the Alan Turing film, if, if you're talking about um, the imitation game, I thought it was really good. Any recommendations for something to watch tonight? Oh boy, where do I start? Bridge of Spies is not on this list, sorry. Lincoln or Schindler's List is not. I, I wish that it was. Waterloo's fantastic, Pascal. Excellent movie. Um, okay. Some of these I haven't seen. So, We Were Soldiers. Going to give Mel Gibson a third A. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't put We Were Soldiers on S, but I thought it was really, really good. And I don't typically get that much into Vietnam movies, but that one was really well done and very historically accurate. And it's got Sam Elliott in it. And Sam Elliott's another one of those actors that I just love him and everything he's in. I think he's pretty much the same person in all those movies. Sam Elliott is just Sam Elliott with a different name in, in a role. Sam Elliott as John Buford was really just Sam Elliott that looked like John Buford. <laughs> but he's great. I love him. I don't see Downfall on here, unfortunately. Monuments Men I haven't seen yet. Hey, Soma in Hungary, my wife's uh, family's home country. Very cool. Uh, there's a lot of movies that aren't on this list, guys. So I didn't make the list. We could put 300 movies on here and we'd miss something. Um, all right. Full Metal Jacket. I'm going to anger some people by making that a B. For me, it's like two different movies. I think all the stuff at basic training to me, would be S or A. The rest of the movie is just very meh for me. I don't know. That's just me. Conspiracy was fantastic. Uh, but I would love to hear you guys what you think about Full Metal Jacket. To me, first half of the movie, fantastic. Second half, very meh. Very average to me. Das Boat I have seen, and it's excellent. I do not watch anime, but my daughter does. That's why you see stuff like Genshin Impact right here, because she's into she plays that game. I ha no, I don't watch Eurovision. I've seen my my timeline because I follow a lot of people in the UK on Twitter. My timeline is blowing up with Eurovision stuff. B Force Gaming, thank you. I loved Downfall. Bruno Gantz as uh, Hitler, phenomenal performance. Should have won all the awards that year for acting. He was great. Um, yeah, Full Metal Jacket, man. I mean, Arlie Ermy in Full Metal Jacket, so good. TRK, thank you. Now, oh, next tier list, ranking over simplified videos. That'd be interesting. Maybe we'll get to that yet in this stream. We'll see how long this takes. Um, all right, let's see. I haven't seen The Unknown Soldier. Okay, The Longest Day. Oh. I tell you what. I'm going to put it S because I would be tempted if I was judging it on 2021 standards for movies. I'd be tempted to drop it down. But for the time when it was made, epic. Absolutely epic. And to this day, I don't think there's any start to finish better way of learning about Operation Overlord than The Longest Day. It covers all of it. Now, there are certain movies that will do parts better, like obviously Saving Private Ryan. You're never going to beat that for the Omaha Beach landings. Uh, I think Ike, uh, the movie Ike, does a fantastic job of so showing you what's going on behind the scenes. Band of Brothers shows you the 101st Airborne perspective. Great, but The Longest Day puts it all together. Obviously, without the blood and gore of a 2021 movie, but... Um, S means, yeah, I guess you could say spectacular. It's higher than A. It's superior, you know, I guess you could say. We'll get to the bridge too far, a bridge too far, because I think that's in here too. But with all of these guys, let me know your thoughts on these things. Bruno Gantz is also in one of my other favorite movies, which is uh, Luther, uh, about Martin Luther, which stars Joseph Fiennes as Martin Luther. Bruno Gantz is kind of his um, mentor, in that movie, and he th that was the first time I ever really saw him in a movie. I haven't seen uh, The Pianist. Wind Talkers? Wind Talkers was all right. Um, 
I wasn't blown away by Wind Talkers. Okay, um, let's see. What else can we go with here? Dunkirk. Okay. Dunkirk, again, boy, this is a tough one for me. I'm going to put Dunkirk as a B. I loved everything about Dunkirk except for the Christopher Nolan spin with the timeline that he did. I hated that. It was a little too artsy for me with that. But taken as individual stories, it was fantastic. Uh, I love so many things about Dunkirk. Uh, and, I, and I would not have a problem with you making it an A, like Insane says. Um, Cold Mountain was really good. I'd make Cold Mountain an A, I think, uh, if it was here. Um, and Walter, that's fair about Luther. Hey, Silvers, glad you could make it. I have seen Jarhead. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I really like about Dunkirk. Uh, just didn't like the um, that, that whole, the, the, the way he told the story, I think. Uh, I'm not basing these on historical accuracy. I'm basing them on, was it a good movie? Did I like the movie? Would I watch it again? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought 1917 was great. I'd probably put 1917 at A. Um, Joshua, thank you and welcome. I'm glad you're here. Waterloo? Waterloo would be an S for me. 1970 movie that did everything that that movie did. So good. I, I, yeah, I need to watch The Pianist. I've seen clips from The Pianist. And I like uh, the actor. It was Adrian Brody was in The Pianist, right? And I loved him in Peaky Blinders, which is also fantastic, by the way. Uh, I have seen Wonder Woman. Outlaw King is excellent. Just watched it again the other day uh, after I did my video on Bannockburn. I, I went and watched Outlaw King again. Robert the Bruce is such a fascinating character to me. Um, S rank so far, we've got Come and See, Glory, and The Longest Day. Um, so I didn't choose these guys. These these are pre-chosen movies for this uh, tier list. So there's a lot of movies that aren't here that I would have put in. Uh, all right, Enemy at the Gates. Okay, this is going to be a tough one. Mm-hmm. C. There's some stuff I really like about Enemy at the Gates. It it taught a lot of people who didn't know anything about Stalingrad what it was about. Uh, it's probably one of the most prominent movies that features a main character who was a historical Russian figure that's portrayed as the hero, which doesn't happen all that many, that often in Hollywood movies. So I like that. So it got a lot of people to learn about Vasily Zaitsev who otherwise might not have. Um, but Ah, yeah, there's some other things I just really don't like about it. I would put Downfall as probably A or S for me. Um, historically, yeah, it is rubbish, but it was a pretty good movie. There's some good things. I might even put it at B, uh, but I don't think I could go higher than that. I have not seen that finished movie, Pekka. I am a direct descendant of Edward III from like three different lines, actually. Uh, Netflix is The King. I'd put probably at a B. Too reliant on Shakespeare for my liking. Um, but it was cool to see Henry V portrayed in a major movie, so that was cool. Um, Walter, there's a lot of stuff about Enemy at the Gates that's decently accurate, uh, but there's a lot that's not either. There was the whole uh, kind of sniper showdown between him and a German sniper, um, but it wasn't necessarily the way it, it's shown. I have seen Greyhound. I thought it was really good. Human waving the enemy without a gun. Um, Letters from Iwo Jima I thought was really good. Um, okay, what else we got here? A Bridge Too Far. I'm going to go A. You know, back in the in the 60s, that kind of time period, for what they had available to them and what they were working with, some great World War II movies that came out. And A Bridge Too Far is not quite the longest day for me, but it's up there. Uh, it's, again, really well done. Gene Hackman's in that. He plays a Polish general. How can you not love that? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who else is in that one. There's a lot of big actors in that one. I have seen X-Men First Class. I thought it was good. Gladiator is a great movie, I agree. I do have a stream delay. It's about 20 seconds or so.
Danny, I'm glad you found the channel. I'm glad you're here. 1979. Is it really that late? Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so 60s and 70s time period. So Felix says he thinks a bridge too far is better than a longest day. I wouldn't argue with that. Yeah, and, and while we're talking about World War II ma movies made in that time period, for me, Torah, 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 absolute S. If you want the definitive uh, Pearl Harbor movie that gets it right, historically, Torah, Torah, Torah is your movie. And they actually filmed it as two separate movies and then put it together. They had a, a, a crew that made the Japanese perspective and one that did the, the American perspective, and then they put them together, which I thought is such a cool way to do that, uh, and it really makes it such a compelling movie. Uh, really, really well done. One of the best war movies of all time, Tora, Tora, Tora. I have not seen Stalingrad 1993. Danny, no. I've never worked in teaching, but I did go to school for that. I went to school, uh, majored in history. My plan was to be a history professor, but uh, I'm actually a, a national speaker for an organization called Rachel's Challenge. Um, I travel around speaking in schools, doing assemblies, uh, talking about kindness and sharing the story of a girl who was killed at Columbine. Yeah, the Japanese were filmed by a Japanese crew. I think that's awesome, the way that they did that. If Tora 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 wasn't S, I would consider unsubscribing, and you would be justified, Gra Geographus. Phenomenal movie. Excellent. Son of the Morning Star is a, a miniseries, but um, I'd put it probably B. I think it's probably about the best portrayal of Custer uh, in everything that leads up to the Battle of Little Bighorn. By the way... Um, I am going to try to squeeze in a visit out there this fall. I'm planning to fly to Billings, Montana and visit the Little Bighorn Battlefield. That's on my to-do list for sometime this year, and I will bring you guys along for that journey and video. I did rank Come and See. That was my first S movie right here. The Napoleon series was very good. I agree. I will do uh, Shaka Zulu versus Julius Caesar. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Fury. Okay. This one's going to be controversial. Because Fury's one of those movies that people either love or hate. There doesn't seem to be a lot of middle ground with it. Purely as entertainment. I am not judging this on historical accuracy as a historian. I'm judging it as a guy who likes history movies. Uh, as entertainment and entertainment alone, Fury's an A for me. PK from Poland, one of my favorite countries. I've never been there, but I cannot wait to visit someday. I am definitely going to take my drone to Little Bighorn. You're going to see my drone this week uh, at some of the sites that I'm visiting. Um. The, the thing with the drones is basically what it comes down to is this. At least here in the U.S., you're not allowed to take off or land on National Park Service property. However, the National Park Service is very clear that they have no jurisdiction over the airspace over their property. So, for example, when I go to uh, Andersonville, there's a museum right near the Andersonville Historic Site. And I was told by somebody that I can go to the parking lot, launch my drone from there, fly right across the street to Andersonville, get all my shots, fly it back. And it's perfectly legal to do that. RC Ace Pilot, thank you. Um, yeah, a lot of people suggest that I react to history buffs. Uh, so I will probably do that at some point. Dominic says he was not entertained by Fury at all. That's why I said that's one of those controversial ones. People either love or hate that movie, it seems. Solo Flash, thank you. Appreciate that. Brad Pitt went from being a tank commander to GM of the Oakland Athletics. Truly an inspiring story. Uh, after being the leader of a commando unit that took out Hitler and the Nazi leadership. History of the World Part 1 on here? No, it's not. But boy, that's a fun movie. That was one of my favorites as a kid. So yeah, so I'm going to be taking my drone to all the sites this week. Uh, for sure. I'm excited. In fact, I had to order because I just got I got an iPhone. I switched from a Galaxy S20 to an iPhone 12 about a month ago. Uh, first iPhone in like eight years. But um, I had to order a special connection because my 
uh, connection from my phone to my drone remote control was for uh, USB-C. So I had to order a, um, order a new connection for it. It's coming tomorrow. So I'll have for that. Uh, Ken Burns, I have not seen his Vietnam War, but his Roosevelt, his baseball, and his Civil War documentaries are all fantastic. B-Force Gaming, thank you. Uh, Tier list of oversimplified is definitely something we'll have to do. I uh, wonder what the ranking for Inglorious Bastards is going to be. Well, it's on here. Switch to iPhone. Traitor! Yeah. Lord Stevenson, yes, we are live. Naval Legends. Uh, maybe we could do that. All right, what do we got? Let's see. What? I don't know what movie this is right here. I can't tell. That's not Kingdom of Heaven, is it? I can't tell what movie that is. It doesn't even say. Maybe somebody can tell me what one that is. Um, all right, let's get to a few more here. I was not a fan of the Hurt Locker. Uh, yeah, I know it didn't it win the Oscar for best director. <sighs> Just couldn't get into it at all. So it's an F for me purely on like I, I got through half of it and I was just done. I couldn't even finish it. Some of you guys won't like it very much, like like me for that. Um, but yeah, sorry. Is that Saving Private Ryan? Oh, I guess that is Tom Hanks. Okay, gotcha. I knew it had to be in there. Talwinder, I have been to call Calvin Coolidge's grave, but I wasn't. I didn't have this channel yet, and I wasn't making videos, so I've got a picture of me at his grave. But um, in fact, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, it's a beautiful spot there in Vermont where he's buried. Let's see. I don't know if I, you guys will be able to see it if I hold it up to you here. Um, let's see. But I'm a big fan of Calvin Coolidge. No, I don't have the picture on Facebook, so I was I was looking to see if I posted it there. But um, Kelly's Heroes, I thought was decent. I thought it was I wasn't ex crazy excited about it, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, the Eagle, I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed the Eagle. Okay, Saving Private Ryan is an S based on entertainment. Now, if I was doing a tier list based on historic movies that I think are also historically accurate, different story. The only turnoff I have to Saving Private Ryan is that it's not a, a true story. I can, you know, I, I would rather a movie like Braveheart that is a true story that gets some stuff wrong, a lot of stuff wrong, uh, than one that's just a fictional story. So, um, that's why, to me, Band of Brothers is like far and away better than Saving Private Ryan, even though it's very similar and was made near the same time and made by the same people. Um, but yeah, I'll give it an S based on uh, the Omaha Beach scene alone gets it an S for me, even if that's all you watch. Um, Tears of the Sun, I don't think it's on here. Darkest Hour, I don't think is either, but that's an excellent movie. Um Free State of Jones, highly recommend that everybody watch that movie. If nothing else, it's a real eye-opening experience about what life was like in the post-war South, uh, which was very ugly for a lot of people. Um, Matt Damon's Shining Teeth. I am a baseball fan. I'm a Cleveland Indians fan. Yeah, Geographus, I, I think that's a fair way to put it. Omaha Landing is S, the rest is meh. There are some decent moments in the rest of the movie. but And I love the part at the end where Tom Hanks' as Captain Miller says to um, Private Ryan when he says, earn this. You know, I, I like that part. Uh, 1917 is not on here, I don't think. Um, Yeah, Band of Brothers to me is the best historical thing ever made, period. Which is why I'm so geeked out to go to Tokoa this week. I am, You have no idea how long I've wanted to make this trip. Uh, the Pacific, I don't think, is in here. These are all movies. I don't think any of these are TV shows. Um, so this is the Thin Red Line, I think. To me, Thin Red Line's a solid A. I think it got lost in the shadow of Saving Private Ryan because it came out not too far off of when Saving Private Ryan came out, but 
Uh, Thin Red Line's a solid movie. It, it's good. It's a good movie. It's not phenomenal, but it's good. Uh, maybe B. I'd make it A minus, B plus, somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> Nick Squash. Yes, thank you. If 1917 was on here, I'd probably put it as an S. If for no other reason than the fact that we don't have very many outstanding night or World War One movies, I wish there were more because there's so many great stories that could be told from that time period, uh, and there just aren't that many. Memphis Bell, I have not seen, which is a crime, I know. Um, the Last Samurai was pretty good. I, I I think I liked it more than a lot of people do. Both 1998. That's what I thought. I, ha I haven't seen To Hell and Back. I need to watch that one. Um, okay. Patton. S for me. Um, believe it or not, other than the character of Patton himself, who was nothing, at least in terms of voice, like George C. Scott, though I think George C. Scott captured the ethos of Patton perfectly. Uh, kind of the, the character of Patton, the kind of guy he was. Um, the voice is so off of what real Patton was like. But the movie is actually pretty good historically. Uh, there's some minor things like with any movie, but by and large it got the important stuff pretty well right. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of Patton anyway as a character, historical character. Um, but Patton was so good. Such a good... That's one of those ones I will watch every time. If I'm flipping through the channel and Patton's on, no matter where it is in the movie, I'm watching it. Uh, Rommel, you magnificent bastard, I read your book! Oh, so good. 13 Hours I thought was great. I would probably make 13 Hours an A. Um, I haven't seen Johnny Got His Gun. Um, yeah, but a lot of like little things they get right with Patton. Uh, like the scene where he's having the meeting about air superiority in Africa and they get attacked, they get strafed and bombed while they're there. Uh, and he runs out with his pistol and starts shooting at the planes. That all really did happen exactly like that. Uh, so stuff like that I just love. T-34 I have not seen. Okay. Um... Their uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, 13 Days, is really good. It's got Kevin Costner in it. Master and Commander is not on this list, but would be an S for me. Uh, phenomenal. I mean, fictional story, but set in a historic time period and done really well for that historic time period. And I love Russell Crowe. So um, what else do we have on this list? Some of these I haven't seen. Um American Sniper, I'm going to make it a B. Uh, I think 20 years from now, it'll probably drop a little bit. But, you know, it, when it came out, it came out in a time when there was a lot of folks um, that I think were wanted to get behind something like that because Chris Kyle had been murdered, uh, because he was he's kind of seen as a big hero, especially in the South, especially to people who are supportive of the war things like that. But I think as time goes on, that'll kind of the, the jingoism that I think caused a lot of the support for that movie, I think will, will die down a little bit, but, um, I think it was very good. I enjoyed it. I don't, I'm not sure it's one I'd watch again, uh, but I thought it was good. Most overrated war film. Ooh. Um, I have to think about that a little bit. I'm just catching up on the chat. Do I know Genghis Khan? No, I've never met him. <laughs> no, um, I, I haven't seen any movies about him either. I, I know they did the one with uh, John Wayne, which is the one that killed everybody, because like a bunch of people who were in that movie got cancer, including John Wayne, who died from it. Uh, Scrap the love story and you love Pearl Harbor. I, I feel that. I, I'd be okay with that. Um. 13 Hours I thought was really, really good. I'd probably put it at a solid A, maybe even S. Uh, but I, I, I really enjoyed 13 Hours. I like John Krasinski and anything he's in. I, I love him as Jack Ryan. I, I, I like that whole series. Um, okay. What else we got here? 
Some of these I haven't seen, but I'll let you guys help me decide. Das Boot S. Another one of those ones that doesn't get nearly enough credit because it's not an English language movie, but really, really good at portraying what it would have been like to be on a U-boat uh, at that time, and I thought it was really, really well done. It's worth your time. Hurt Locker overrated. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's fair. The Alamo 2004, I, I really liked, and that's another one of those ones I'll watch every time it's on. I'd probably make it an A if I were ranking it. You can see, unlike a lot of my lists, uh, mine's pretty top-heavy, at least of the ones I've seen so far. When did I start having a, a fascination for history? When I was eight years old. Um, crash Course History Videos. Lorsica, I will check that out. Um, when I was eight years old, it was um, when they found the Titanic. 1985. That was the first time I heard about a topic and I thought, man, I got to learn more about this. And I went to the library and got every book I could about the Titanic and just started learning. And that has become a lifelong obsession for me is when I learn about a topic, I learn everything about that topic. When I watched Braveheart, I spent the next month consuming everything I could about William Wallace. Uh, I do that with, with historic topics. And that's kind of where my love for history began. Uh, when Gore Vidal's Lincoln miniseries came out and then also Ken Burns' Civil War series. Those are the two things that made me fall in love with Civil War history. And that's kind of where it kind of went from there. The only thing they can't represent in Das Boot is the smell. I have not seen Unknown Soldier. Midway 2019 would be probably B plus A minus for me. I haven't seen Indianapolis. Worst American Civil War movie. Hmm. Worst. I don't know, because I'm a little biased in that. Anything about the Civil War, I automatically like. And there's there are some good ones, and a lot of them are actually miniseries. Uh, Andersonville was a TNT miniseries. It was really good. Um, the Blue and the Gray is fantastic. Uh, it's, it weaves a fictional story into historic events, and I think tells the story really well. Lincoln, of course, is great. Um, favorite female historical figure. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Queen Elizabeth the first. I haven't seen Barry Lyndon. 1917 is excellent. Um, good evening, Peter in the Czech Republic downfall, probably S or a for me, but it's not in here. Im imitation games in a for me. Um, okay, let's do another one here. What's this here? I can't tell what that one is. Somebody help me out and tell me what this movie right here is. The Great Escape, I'm going to give a B to. Um, it was good. I didn't think it was great. Like, I wasn't stuck to the edge of my seat wanting to watch it, and it's not one that I'd want to watch over and over again. So purely as entertainment, eh. North and South was pretty good as a series as well. Do I think Biden will hurt, uh, keep the curse broken? I hope so, because uh, I don't want to see anybody get uh, die in office. I I don't want to see that happen. Thirteen hours, I'd make an A for me. I've I've done many tours of DC, but I haven't made any videos about them. But I'm planning to get back uh, to do that at some point. I don't know that there are any really good Seven Years War movies. Jack Rackham, I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen him. Neutral music, thank you. Appreciate that. Is that Flags of Our Fathers? I can't tell. It might be. I just can't see what the words say down on the bottom right there. Letters from Iwo Jima. Oh, Flags of Our Fathers is right here. So that might be Letters of Iwo Jima there. Letters from Iwo Jima there. Okay. Letters from Iwo Jima for me is an A. I thought it was really good, and I thought it was cool how they do Flags of Our Fathers. Aren't Flags of Our Fathers and Letters Free? It's been years since I've seen either one. Kind of two sides of the same story. Uh, one's told from the Japanese perspective. One's told from the American's perspective. Interesting thing about uh, Flags of Our Fathers, though, they have since found out that the people that they thought raised that flag on Iwo Jima, a couple of them were wrong. Uh, they only, in the last few years, have confirmed who a couple of those folks were. I haven't seen Ran. I have seen the Robert the Bruce movie. 
Uh, yeah, there's there's a couple. There's Outlaw King on Netflix, and then there's actually I think a movie called Robert the Bruce, uh, who which stars Angus McFadden, who's the same guy who played Robert the Bruce in Braveheart. But Outlaw King uh, picks up kind of after Braveheart and shows everything almost up to the Battle of um, Bannockburn, but it it shows the Battle of Loudon Hill a little bit historically inaccurate because it shows Robert the Bruce and Edward II actually having a, a sword duel and him being let go, and he wasn't even at that battle. Um, Clint Eastwood did direct both of them, I thought so. Red Tails I thought was pretty good. Oh, yeah, there's so many great things about Glory. Favorite World War II game. Ooh, hmm. Lincoln's fantastic, and I had read the book that Lincoln is based on. Um, Dirk, where are you in Hawaii? We, My wife and I went to Oahu and Kauai on our honeymoon. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Flags of Our Fathers for me, since we were talking about that, I'll make a B. It's pretty good. I didn't think, I wasn't blown away by it. All right, here we go. The Patriot. I wanted so badly to love that movie. And there are things I do love. I love Jason Isaacs. Anything Jason Isaacs is in, I love. And he's a great Tavington who's loosely based on Bannister Tarleton. Um, I, what's the name of the guy, the actor who played. Cornwallis, he's great in everything he's in. He was Benjamin Franklin in John Adams. Um, I'm losing the name of the actor off the top of my head. So there's some things I really like about The Patriot. Um, but overall, it's a C for me. It's just a little bit too much American flag-waving. Americans are great and the British are evil. Especially considering what my family went through at the hands of Mel Gibson and his Patriots during that time. They showed the British as, you know, Tavington as being this guy who locks innocent people in churches and burns them up. They don't show that the Mel Gibsons of the world in that part of the story strung up loyalists all the time. They hanged eight loyalists that they captured at the Battle of Kings Mountain. Three of my ancestors who were loyalists who were hanged in Virginia and North Carolina by these patriots. And so for me, I don't like the whole black and white, good versus evil thing going on in that movie to me. Uh, Tom Wilkinson. Thank you, Zach. I love Tom Wilkinson. He's one of those people I love in anything he's in. He's in um, uh, Mission Impossible in those movies and so good. Heath Ledger is in The Patriot. He plays Mel Gibson's son in The Patriot. The Perfect Sea. Uh, Empire tier list, we will definitely do at some point. Darn Mel Gibson. Um, Ran is like Master and Commander. Gotcha. Okay. Last of the Mohicans, I've never seen. And I love Daniel Day-Lewis. Lincoln would be an S for me. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis' portrayal of Lincoln is just phenomenal. It's so spot on. And uh, I like Jared Harris, and he plays uh, Grant in that one. Andre Mogason, born in 89. Hey, hey, I was 12 years old then. You grew up binging on Discovery Channel back in post-communist 90s Romania. That opened the world for you. My, your generation, Generation War? Yes. Uh, it's not on this list, unfortunately, but I just watched it a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I think were it not for the fact that it's uh, not English speaking, would probably have been huge here in America. A lot of people describe it as the German Band of Brothers, and it is. Generation War is so, so good. Uh, even with subtitles, guys, I highly recommend it. I haven't seen Johnny get it, Got His Gun. I have seen Battle of Britain. It's very good. National Treasure, I like. I love National Treasure. It's a great movie. I enjoy it a lot. Um, okay. What else do we have? Inglorious Bastards. I'll give it a B. I, it, it was a good movie. I'm not a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, honestly. Um, Django Unchained was probably my favorite of his movies that he's done. Um, but uh, just a little over the top for me. I know that's what Quentin Tarantino is. Um, but for me, it was just all right, I guess. Hacksaw Ridge is uh, right here. It's A. I have seen Darkest Hour, really good. 
Vinicius Rocky, uh, Sal from Brazil. Thank you. Appreciate that. Glad you're here. Yeah, Generation War. Highly recommend it, guys. Can't rank MASH without having seen or read Last of Mohicans. I'm not sure what one has to do with the other. For Whom the Bell Tolls, I have not seen. Christoph Waltz uh, is great. and He's another one of those actors who's just so good in anything. Shaka Zulu, I did. I watched it as a kid, and it was really good. Um, Edwin, I have not seen that. What else do we have here? Apocalypse Now. Again, I'm not a huge, not really into Vietnam movies, but Robert Duvall is great. Um, isn't Willem Dafoe in that one? There's a lot of great things in that movie. I haven't seen My Way. Defiance is great. I loved Defiance. I thought it was really good. Is Zulu on this list? I don't see it. Beckett, I thought was pretty good. That's the one that has... um. Oh, isn't that the one with what's-his-name from The Godfather? Marlon Brando, is he in Beckett? Or maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Just throw Jarhead in the F category. Turn Washington Spies for me is an A. Really good. Kingdom of Heaven would be another A for me. I thought... You know, we don't get a lot of good movies about the uh, uh, the Crusades, and I thought that was a good one, and I thought it was fairly balanced on how it showed the different sides. Amistad was very good. Valkyrie's not on this list. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and drop Jarhead in the F category. Was not a fan of that movie at all. Saving Private Ryan we have up here, don't we? Yeah, I put that in S tier. I haven't seen my way. Hornblower was great. Midway is not on this list. The Passion of Joan of Arc, I haven't seen. Das Boat is up here. Um, okay, what else do we have? Let's talk about MASH. Brando's in Apocalypse Now. Okay. Unbroken was pretty good. Tropic Thunder. I really liked Tropic Thunder. I thought it was really good. Enjoyed that one a lot. And Kingdom of Heaven is another one of those ones I'll watch bef uh, many times. Hacksaw Ridge, yeah, I've got it in A right here. I haven't seen Undefeated. Um, okay, so let's talk about MASH. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of MASH the movie. I, I, I much prefer the TV show to the movie. Uh, there were some decent moments in the movie, but I, I watched it once and just wasn't that impressed, I guess. I have seen The Irishman. That was, I thought, very good. Yeah, a lot of veterans do say that about Jarhead. And I'm not judging it based on its historic accuracy or its accurate portrayal of things. It's really just, did I like the movie? And what did I think of it? Um, Defoe is in Platoon. Okay, Martin Sheen's in Apocalypse Now. I get those confused. Like I said, not a huge fan of Vietnam movies for the most part. Um Guys, a lot of these things that you're asking about, I've already ranked, so I'm not going to go back and kind of talk about them again. U571 was all right. I wasn't blown away by it. Um, yeah, I like McConaughey. I like um, uh, who's the other actor that the the guy from uh, the guy was in the Alamo. Or no, he wasn't in the Alamo. He was in. Um, he played Sam Houston and um, Texas Rising is who I'm thinking of. Uh, sometimes names just escape me. He passed away a few years ago. He's from Texas. Oh, Paxton, Bill Paxton, who's a great, great grandson of the general, uh, Confederate general Paxton. Uh, I believe that's the film, Das Boot. Cause these are all movies. Black Hawk Down. I, I already ranked. Um, okay. I'm getting down to some that I haven't seen yet. So what do we have here? I'm looking close because I can't quite tell what some of these are. Lone Survivor, I haven't seen. Deer Hunter, I've never seen. I've seen clips from it. War Horse, I've never seen. Um, Platoon, again, probably a B for me. Not Just not that into um, those movies from that time period. Bridge on the River Kwai, I thought I saw that somewhere in here. Yeah, that's an A for me. I wouldn't put it S tier, but I think I'll probably a lot of people, other people would. I have seen Downfall. Yeah, it's excellent. 
Sharp's not a movie. Lone Survivor A tier. Lone Survivor was good. I was I like Mark Wahlberg. Um, I'll give it an A. Generation Kill. I have not. I've only seen like a few scenes from. I haven't seen uh, all that much from Generation Kill. S Lone Survivor. You can trust me. I'm a doctor. All right. So I'm not going to rank the ones I haven't seen. Um, I'm looking to see what else is left here. I don't know what this is right here. This is All Quiet on the Western Front. That's probably an S tier, even though it's a really older movie compared to a lot. I haven't seen Ridley Scott's The Duelists. I haven't seen War Horse. No, I, I've seen Lone Survivor. I must have misspoke. I, I was thinking of um, uh, of The Hurt Locker that I, had, I haven't seen. Lost Battalion is very good. Yeah, uh, and that's the point. All Quiet on the Western Front, for, I'm trying to judge these for the time in which they were made rather than on today's standards of what makes a good movie. Um, the Pianist, I have not seen, so I won't judge. Uh, Deer Hunter, I haven't seen. I'm looking to see. I don't think there's anything else on this list that I have actually seen. I don't know what this one is here. Is that to Helen back? I can't tell. Where Eagles Dare, I haven't seen. Is that that looks like um, Kirk Douglas? I can't quite tell. Is that past the glory? Is that what that one is there? Because that looks like Kirk Douglas. 1917 isn't there. The Dirty Dozen I ranked. Restrepo I haven't seen. Actually, I haven't even heard of that one. So that's that's unusual there. Um, I, I, I'm not familiar with unknown Sol the Unknown Soldier. All right, so those are the ones that w I, I will have ranked. And again, there's a ton so many movies that weren't on this list um, that I didn't have a chance to, uh, to rank. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, I want to mention real quick about uh, my trip coming up this week just to kind of let you know what to be expecting. And this is going to kind of be told as a series of videos, probably six or seven videos at least. Um, and I, I am inviting you guys, if you are in the area, to join me uh, in these historic sites as I visit them. Uh, but Thursday morning, this is my Thursday right here. Um, Thursday is going to start with me driving to the Pittsburgh airport, which is about an hour from my house. Uh, I'll be getting a 545 flight from Pittsburgh down to Atlanta. I'll be landing in Atlanta at like 7.30 in the morning and driving up to Chickamauga, the battlefield. And uh, if you live in the area and you want to be a part of the video uh, or just tour the uh, battlefield with me, and I'm, I'm reading a book on Chickamauga right now, um, planning on having that done by the time I go, so I'm studied up and ready to go. Uh-oh, uh we're having a problem. This is what I get for going on to something else. All right, I think we're back on track. I don't know what happened there. I have no idea what happened. It looked like my my streaming software stopped for a minute. All right, anyway. Um, so we're going to meet up at the Chickamauga Battlefield uh, Visitor Center around 1045 on Thursday morning. So if you're in the area and you want to join us, we'd love to have you. Um, we're going to meet. I'm going to try to tour as much of the battlefield as possible in the short time that we have. Uh, the battlefield itself is not that big as far as the area that you can see, so I think we ought to be able to cover that in a couple of hours. Um, it's not nearly as big as a lot of battlefields. From there, uh, in the afternoon, the plan is to drive up here to the National Medal of Honor Heritage Center, which is a brand new museum. Uh, and my friend JD, who uh, has a fantastic YouTube channel you guys should all subscribe to, called The History Underground. I uh, just did a video from there recently that was really good and made me want to go see it too. He's the one that I'm going to be working with this weekend. 
Um, so we're going to tour that. Uh, Desmond Doss's Medal of Honor and his uniform are among a lot of the exhibits they have there. Uh, from there, we're going to go over to the Chattanooga National Cemetery where Desmond Doss is buried, uh, as well as the Andrews Raiders, who were the first to receive the Medal of Honor. Uh, and so, and 100 or so uh, German POWs are buried there as well. So we're going to tour that. And I'll be making videos of all of this stuff for you guys to see. Um, so that'll be happening for sure. Uh, from there, depending on how much daylight we have, because most national parks in the United States are open until dark, um, we're going to try to hit Missionary Ridge and Lookout Mountain, as much of it as I can see with the time I have left. I'll be taking the drone along for all of this stuff as well, so we'll try to get some good drone shots for you in all these videos. Um, and, and you guys are welcome at any and all of these places if you're with me, uh, or if you're around. So, uh, But I don't have a lot of time. Uh, this is all going to have to be on Thursday because then Friday morning I'll be driving and I, I'm just kind of kind of giving you guys the rundown of my week because I, I want to invite you guys to join along plus to let you know that you're going to be seeing videos from all of these places. Uh, try to tell you as much of the story as I can. Uh, from Chattanooga on Friday morning, ah, if I could type, uh, I'm going to be driving to Tacoa, Georgia. So if you have seen Band of Brothers, you'll know that this is where the guys from Easy Company trained. Uh, was in Tacoa. So it's about a three hour drive and we're supposed to meet up at noon. Uh, JD from the History Underground has put together a team of about 20 of us that are gonna, we're gonna spend the day Friday touring the base there at uh, Curahi, um, going to uh, see a museum in town that's dedicated to the guys from Band of Brothers and the 101st Airborne. Uh, then Saturday uh, is not a day that I'll be meeting up with anybody or touring or anything because Saturday we're going to be up on top of Curry cleaning all the graffiti. There's a ton of graffiti up there. Uh, and I am planning on doing the three miles up, three miles down. And it's supposed to be in the 90s in Georgia where it's really humid too. So it's going to be a rough three miles up, three miles down. Um, but we're going. So we're going to be going to that then. Then on Sunday, I will be driving from Tacoa all the way down to Andersonville. It's about a four hour drive, three and a half hours uh, to Andersonville, Georgia. You can see all see that drive there. I have never been to Andersonville. It's some a place that's on my on my bucket list. Uh, on the way, I'm gonna be stopping at a few places. Uh, among others, I believe that somewhere in here, right on my journey, I can't remember what town it is off the top of my head, but General Longstreet is buried. I, I might be in Gainesville. I think he's buried in Gainesville. Um, but I'm going to be stopping at Longstreet's grave. I'll be stopping at some other places along the way. Uh, so then s Sunday afternoon and Monday morning will be spent at Andersonville before I fly home on Monday night. So that's the plan. Uh, I know Andrew Snodgrass, who's a longtime uh, subscriber to this channel, big supporter of this channel, is planning to meet with me at Andersonville on Sunday. Uh, he's driving up from Florida, so uh, and others of you are welcome to join us for that as well. Uh, I'm not going to Florida on this trip. Um, so that's kind of the plan. With that in mind, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm always ambitious, Steve, with my travel arrangements. I try to squeeze in as much as possible with the time that I have. And honestly, I would have gone down on Wednesday and given myself two days for Chick Chickamauga and Chattanooga, but my sons both have soccer games on Wednesday night, and I'm the coach of both teams. So I'm coaching both of them Wednesday night and then flying out on the earliest flight I could get on Thursday morning. So that's why. Um so that's that. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate that. The, the haircut's just a lot easier than having my hair in my face all the time, especially when I'm making videos. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. But lots of, of uh, new content coming your way in the near future. Join us on Discord. Antonius, thank you. Uh, Antoninus, uh, Antoninus, thank you. Um, he died in Gaines Gainesville. I think he's buried there as well, Duke. Uh, join us on Discord, uh, and I've got a private channel on there where I'll be discussing those plans. If you do think you'd like to join me for any of these sites, let me know uh, on Discord, and I can kind of connect with you that way. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you, everybody who donated on the stream, and we'll see you again soon.